spend some time talking about magmagenesis, thinking specifically about the role of volatiles in the formation of magmas. Learning goals for today will include understanding how to read and interpret depth temperature graphs, to understand how volatiles influence the melting temperature of rocks, and to understand the role that volatiles play in a plate tectonic context. When we think of volatiles, we are thinking primarily about what happens when oceanic lithosphere subducts beneath either continental lithosphere or another plate of oceanic lithosphere. Now we're thinking about what happens as that plate goes deeper and water is driven from the oceanic crust because of the increasing depths and therefore pressures. Today we're going to be thinking about what exactly is taking place that is causing the melting of the asthenosphere immediately above that subducting oceanic lithosphere. And so the white oval, that area is really what we're focusing on. This is a graph that shows temperature up above on the x-axis versus depth, which is the equivalent of pressure on the y-axis. So on the left, we have depths in kilometers ranging from zero up at the top of the graph to more than 100 kilometers as we get toward the bottom. And then over on the right, we have the pressure measured in kilobars. We're going to be thinking specifically about what the temperatures are like simply due to the increases in temperature with depth. So we're thinking about what are the temperatures going to be acting on a rock, and in this case we're thinking about a mantle rock at about 100 kilometers depth. So just looking at what the normal geothermal gradient is, we would be at just under 1,000 degrees Celsius when we're at 100 kilometer steps. Now the pink curve that is uh, over to the right is the melting curve for dry peridotite. So in other words, we don't have any volatiles involved at this point. And if you think about what this shows, it's showing that at a depth of 100 kilometers beneath uh, the surface, we are not at a high enough temperature to get any melting to take place. So in other words, if we decided we wanted melting to take place without changing anything else, we would need to increase the temperature acting on that rock, sliding that star over to the right until we hit that melting curve. But that's not what we're going to do. Today we're going to be thinking about what happens when we actually add water to the mix. So we have our asthenosphere sitting there at just under 1,000 degrees Celsius. There's our yellow star. Now what happens now is we say, okay, let's go ahead, let's add water. Remember this is coming from the oceanic lithosphere and it's rising up into the asthenosphere. And because we have added that water to the peridotite, which is the rock that makes up the asthenosphere, we reduce the melting point at every pressure, in other words, at every depth. So our new melting curve, when we've actually added volatiles to the system, shifts way to the left, in other words, to much lower temperatures. Down at 100 kilometer steps, we are actually down at a temperature of somewhere between probably you know, 600 and 800 degrees Celsius. If we actually think about this, that means that we would expect melting in the peridotite that is sitting over the oceanic lithosphere because we have actually shifted the entire melting curve. So we don't even need to think about that dry melting curve anymore because we have wet peridotite. And therefore, the yellow star, which represents our mantle rock at that depth, is now to the right of the melting curve and therefore at temperatures above which you would expect melting to occur. And so we expect to get basaltic magma in other words, mafic magma, as a product of the partial melting of the ultramafic peridotite. And you can see that we're down at 100 kilometers depth, and the deeper you go, we're talking down to 100, down to 200 kilometers depth, we would expect partial melting to be occurring at all depths uh, similar to that um, with a normal geothermal gradient. 
Now, as a consequence of this, we get melting immediately above where the water is entering the system from the oceanic crust. And although I'm not going to talk about it here, that magma that's produced by that partial melting process then rises and eventually uh, can be erupted at the surface.